Hello everyone, welcome back. It is early October of 2024. We're out in the pawpaw patch here taking a look at some of our trees and quite a bit of fruit. This is the sunflower pawpaw tree. Um, I mentioned this before, one of the issues that you're going to see with pawpaws is, um, here's a whole bunch of fruit here, um, getting them ripe in time, especially dependent on cultivar. So sunflower for us is one that is like these are still really hard and I'm filming this it's like October 10th or something like that this tree is typically like a November 1st um, last week of October first week of November if the fruit ripens there's as you can see a ton of fruit on here but when you feel pawpaws to see if they're ripe you just kind of give them a gentle squeeze you know just to feel if there is a bit of give like if they're soft almost like an avocado about to ripen then you can pick them off the tree and it's probably a good idea to do that ripen them on the counter they're going to be just fine these though are hard as a rock still i mean they're like most of these are it, it sounds strange to say too but they almost feel cold to the touch when you go to squeeze them if they're not ripe um it's just sort of a feeling it's hard to exactly describe but it's like a rock hard green avocado is kind of what they feel like um except they have like this kind of like um, cold feel to them it's it's a strange thing if you feel pawpaws that aren't ripe you would know what I mean one of the problems is people pick these when they're like this so they're rock hard assuming they're gonna ripen up on the counter and from my experience they really don't um, now if they have some give to them like if you squeeze and they have a little bit of give obviously you're not gonna squeeze them really hard but just a gentle pressure if they yield to that in that case, if you pick them, they generally will ripen up pretty well on the counter. Maybe a week, week and a half it'll, it'll take, but they'll ripen up nicely. But they have to have some give to them before you pick them, because if they don't, they're just not going to ripen up. Here's some fruit buds for next year on the sunflower. So this is a very productive tree. We got it in 2017 from Stark Brothers. It was in a little 4-inch pot. It was basically just one little tiny branch. The thing was so small and now it's grown into this behemoth. I've actually made it a multi-grafted pawpaw tree. I've grafted overlees into it from our other tree, um, NC1 from our other tree, and some of the um, Taitu and, and mango seedling um, scions from our other trees too. So I'm hoping to kind of get some more diversity in the tree in terms of flowers for pollination, just because it's, here's one of our grafts that took this year, just a simple cleft graft. Um, I think that one is the overlees, but also, you know, it, at least it'll have some fruit on it that gets ripe because the sunflower, it's really seems to have a hard time ripening in our climate here. So something to think about when you, this is another one of our graphs, something to think about when you um, select your cultivars of pawpaws, just like any other fruit, there's going to be some that are going to ripen earlier, some that will ripen later. So really pay attention to that because... I mean, this tree is, you can see it, it's extremely healthy, it's doing great, it puts on, I think there's like 70 fruit on this tree right now, but we might only actually get to harvest 10, if we're lucky, that will ever get ripe. So that's just something to think about, especially if you're growing it and it's your one of your only trees and you really want fruit. Um, you'll get fruit. Will they ripen is the question. So let's go check out some of our other trees. So over this way we have some seedlings. You see how big this thing has gotten. This is the mango seedling. And in this particular space, it's very happy. There's a creek behind the fence here, and so the water table's pretty high. These are pretty happy trees. This is an interesting thing, though, that you'll see with seedlings, is they take a lot longer to fruit. I mean, look at this. There's no fruit buds. I've searched this whole tree. I mean, the thing is every bit of probably 10 feet tall, and still no fruit buds. I mean, it's growing and growing. You can see the leaves are super healthy. It's a very happy tree, but when you plant a seedling, it's going to take a couple years longer than a grafted tree. So the sunflower was a grafted tree. This is just a seedling of a mango um, sunflower or a mango pawpaw. Um, but yeah, no, um, no fruit buds anywhere. So hopefully next year it'll put some on. I mean, it's certainly big enough to. This is a Taitu seedling. These were planted on the same day. They were the same exact size. So you can kind of see the role genetics play. But this Taitu does have a couple of fruit buds um, here. And there's one right there. There's a couple in the tree. I'm kind of hoping that I just missed them on the um, 
on the mango tree next to it. Maybe because it's so big, I just didn't see them. But this one definitely does have a few. Not many, though. And it probably won't fruit next year. One, one thing you'll notice about pawpaws is the first year they flower, they typically aren't going to put fruit on. That looks like a flower bud there. Um, but they'll flower, and then the next year they'll put out more flowers and fruit. That's not really unique to pawpaws. Apples will do the same thing from what I've noticed anyway. They'll flower one year. You might get an apple, but then the next year they'll put on a nice crop for the first time. And then after that, you're, you're good to go. Here's the Shenandoah. This one is by far our most productive and best quality fruit that we've had in terms of our pawpaws. You can see that when they put fruit on, they tend to be in clumps, uh, not always, but clumps of four or five. And these are just starting to soften up a little bit. Um, some on the other side are much further ahead, so we're going to taste test those at the end of the video. These aren't ready to pick yet, but for us Shenandoah, we're in western New York, they get ripe. Um, usually between October 15th and October 31st. I've never had the Shenandoah not get ripe for us. It's always ripened all the fruit that it grows. I mean, look at those beautiful leaves. Not even one little insect bite. And nothing was sprayed on these at all, all year. Uh, I spray the apple trees, but I don't ever spray the pawpaw trees unless Japanese beetles hit them. And this year we didn't really have many Japanese beetles, so that's kind of nice. But some of these leaves are starting to turn for fall. This is NC1. No fruit on this one, but hopefully next year because it's loaded with buds. So we're going to go in and kind of take a look at some of the fruit on these trees, but this is definitely part of our project today. I'm going to be kind of cutting a path through here a little bit, make this a little bit easier to access, but let's go in uh, right there. I'm just going to sort of chop a little hallway through here. Pawpaws respond really well to pruning. There's um, I've pruned them quite a bit to get them uh, mostly manageable in this little area and it's worked great. I mean they just bush right out and do fine just like any other plant. So let's go in and take a look at some of the fruit in the Shenandoah which as I mentioned is by far I think the best pawpaw that we've grown and because I'm picking them when they're at their peak ripeness I think the best pawpaws I've ever had because typically when you're buying them or going to a festival you're going to find a lot of fruit that just aren't ripe and don't really get ripe. And so you're just not getting the peak flavor that you could get. Those are a little bit hard, but if we come in here, this group of, there's four here, um, they, you can kind of see on the camera even, they spring a little bit. Um, that one I just pointed to especially. Sometimes color can be an indicator. You can see they, they almost look yellowish. That, that's not coming out super well for some reason. You can kind of see it there, but also all those black speckles almost like a banana looks when it starts to ripen. Those are usually pretty good indicators. Smell is also a good indicator. But my rule of thumb is when they have a nice, when you can squeeze them and they have a nice give to a gentle pressure like that, that's a good time to harvest them because only bad things can happen from that point on. If you harvest them and bring them in, let them sit on your counter for a week, they're going to be absolutely perfect. So let's go inside and we'll take a look a week later at that particular um, group of fruit. So we're back in. It's about a week later. These are the Shenandoahs that I showed a few minutes ago. And they, like, they've been sitting on the counter for a week in this box with the top closed. So that, that's a great way to ripen them. Like I said, when they start to get soft on the tree, they're going to develop completely ripe on your counter. If you let them stay on the tree and fall off, they might hit the ground, break open, animals might peck at them, something might steal them, only bad things are going to happen and the return is really minimal. Once they start to really soften up, they're going to ripen perfectly on your counter. So that's why I say just pick them and bring them in. So let's take a little taste of this one. I'm just doing this one-handed, but oh, it is so good. The Shenandoah, it, it just has that taste that all pawpaws have, but it doesn't have any bitterness at all, like zero. And it's just a creamy, super sweet. This is so sweet, this texture, this texture, but also the flavor. Um, very high sugar content, really bright citrusy, uh, you know, just tropical kind of flavor. Um, just incredible. I can't say enough good things about Shenandoah. And the fruit are gigantic. I mean, we're going to make another video, some later harvest from that tree where the fruit are even bigger. So here's one of the ones I just picked. But thank you for watching. We hope to see you again soon. We're going to have a bunch of content from the orchard coming up over the next several weeks. So hopefully you stay tuned for that.